your perspective on that, being open to ideas and wanting to go and do things, um, that and not focusing on present matters, that is actually a combination of your prospecting trait, which I'll discuss later, and your intuitive trait. Versus with KK, that is a mixture of her observant trait and her judging trait because that puts her in a role group in which they're more concerned about observant matters rather than just living in the state of living in that state of mind. You're listening to the Kniep and It Real Jodcast. This is your host, Seth Kniep. Countdown in three, two, one. What is up, everybody? This is Seth Kniep, Kniep and It Real. Today, I have a treat for you. I've never talked about this topic ever on any Jodcast, any podcast in my 43 years of existence on planet Earth. And today we're going to talk about something that is so central to succeeding in life, personalities. When you understand yourself, it gives you the capacity to understand other people. And when you understand people, it gives you the capacity to succeed. Your business, your marriage, your parenting, even your finances, your wealth, all of these things surround at the core relationship. Relationship is at the core of that. And one of the most helpful tools to enhancing those relationships is when you understand personality. So today it is my honor to bring on our guest, Atali. She's known on TikTok as Atali the Mediator. Not known, but okay. (laughs) Getting there. And Atali, I know you wouldn't say this about yourself, but I'm just going to brag on her a little bit. She has been looking into, I like to call it studying personalities for the last two years at home. We have a lot of fun conversations. She's my daughter, by the way. Tons of fun conversations about personalities. And multiple times when we have interviewed new staff, I will bring her in and ask her to ask them a few questions or listen. And within seconds, she knows their personality. And then it gives us a little insight on whether or not they're a good fit for this role. So you're in for a real treat. This is going to be a really interesting conversation, especially because I have no idea how it's going to go. (laughs) <laughs> so Adelie, thanks so much for being on the Kniep and Real Jodcast. Sure. Thanks for that introduction. And I'm ready to get down into it. All right. So let me ask you this first. Why do you think understanding personalities is so important? Like what are some of the benefits in life and how has it helped you personally? Well, I think it's important because people are everywhere and people are the center of everything. So understanding personalities will help you a long way in any um, anything you're doing in your life, really. You know, whether that be business or your personal life or ventures, new ventures that you want to take. Um, understanding personalities helps you have a better empathy towards people um, and gives you insight as to why they make certain decisions or what they why they say certain things. Can you give me an example of that? Like what's a personality? And this is based on Maya Briggs, but then later also 16 personalities, right? Well, I'll get into that part in a bit. Okay. Can you give me an example of how, you know, okay, how I lead this uh, this podcast? Like what's a different personality and how might someone else lead it different than I would? Because I think you you might have an idea of what my personality type is, right? Oh, I have more than an idea. (laughs) Um, Would it help if I first explained the kind of personalities that we're going to be basing this conversation on? Absolutely. Yeah. And as you guys listen, I think you'll enjoy this because you can figure out, hey, is this my personality? Is this who I am? Does this reflect me? I think you'll find this pretty fascinating. All right, cool. So what we're basing it off of is MBTI Myers-Briggs type indicator. Um, So I prefer the 16 personalities take on this. 16 personalities is a company and they have a test and their own definitions of all the personalities, but it lines in nicely with the Myers-Briggs type indicator, which is kind of a more known, longly trusted personality test. So 16P is actually a big five test. 
And what Big Five is, is it rates people on their openness to experience, their conscientiousness, their extroversion, their agreeableness, and their neuroticism. I said that wrong, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and basically what it does is it takes these traits and it pairs them up with MBTI uh, indicators. So it's kind of a mixture of the two. And that's why I like 16P because I feel like it takes natural traits about a person and present truths about a person's personality and puts them together. Because someone could be born like an extrovert, but have experiences in their life that kind of makes them less prone to be maybe social. So I feel like it takes both things in mind uh, and kind of mushes them together. So let's go through each of the pairs. Okay, and let's talk about what they mean. So people who are watching, they, you know, get a sort of a grip on what this is. So starting with extrovert versus introvert, when I, first of all, I'll just be very transparent. I grew up sort of with the mentality that if you're an introvert, then there's some, you're just not socially, uh, you're socially inept. All right. I don't believe that now, obviously, but I kind of grew up in a, an environment where that was the thing. In fact, I remember one time being at a church and a pastor said, if you are an introvert, you are wrong because you're not loving people, which is like getting really ridiculous. So can you can you just kind of pop that bubble sure. with your needle of wisdom on this topic? Um, so the first trait of MBTI is extroversion versus introversion. So a lot of people just assume like extroversion is you're social, you know, you're a people person. <laughs> That's not always the case. The life of the party and they love everybody and they can and, talk to people all day. Right, right, right. And most extra, most people who are those life of the party people are extroverts. However, what it really means is where do you get your energy? Do you get energy in the outside world or do you get energy in the inside world in your head? So inside world would be like uh, being introspective, maybe reading, maybe being by myself. Is, is that what you mean by inside world? And then outside right. world would be, hey, Josiah, or hey, Ali, I want to share something with you. I learned something new and let's talk about it. You want to collaborate more? So introverts need more time to recoup after externally stimulating experiences, whether that be um, talking with people. Like you can absolutely be a social introvert. It just means you need more time to recoup or you're less dependent on people. Gotcha, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Do you think introverts come off as cold sometimes? Um, yeah, I mean, the other traits combined with that uh, affects it as well, but if you're very introverted, you can seem like you don't really care about people, which yeah. is probably why your church had that assumption. Do you think extroverts come off as kind of shallow? Cause they just want to talk, talk, talk all the time and, I know I'm using extreme stereotypes here, but... Well, I mean, stereotypes are based off of truth. So yes, I think many extroverts can seem that. And I guess also it's based off of um, what percentage you are, because some people are truly on the border. Like they don't feel like they get energy from the internal world or external world more than the other. They kind of get it from both. That's really interesting. So would you consider me an introvert or an extrovert? I think everyone can consider you an extrovert. <laughs> Are you an introvert or an extrovert? I'm more on the introverted side, but yeah. not not too far down. But what does this mean then? Because, and I think a lot of people can relate to this. When I am around people, I do get a lot of energy, but after a while, I feel exhausted and I need to be by myself and read a book. And every night I look forward to reading Lord of the Rings as I fall asleep. And I don't want people to talk to me. So there, we do have the extroverts who seriously do not need any time by themselves. But honestly, I think those are- A very rare breed. Right. <laughs> Can you imagine if they're the only person in the world? They just probably die of loneliness. Yeah. <laughs> so there are those kinds of people and that's not wrong if you just prefer to be with people all the time. That's actually yeah. very handy. Um, but for you, in your specific type, being an ENFP, and I'll go into the other traits later as well, you exert yourself so much that you become mentally exhausted, and that's why you need time to recoup. But as soon as you're recouped, you can't stand being alone. You have to go out in the world, and you have to go do things, and you have to go pe be this with people. This is true. 
This is true. Okay. So here's my, so we talked about extrovert versus introvert. Mm -hmm. Extroverts tend to get their energy from the outside world, being around people interacting, and introverts tend to get it from the inside world. But no human on earth is completely one or the other. Everyone at some level need a little alone time or in, in, or need people time. All right. Besides the few anomalies. The few anomalies. Fair enough. Okay. Now let's talk about the next two. So we talked about um, I and E or E and I. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about S and N. So the intuitives versus the observant. So can you explain what's the difference between someone who's naturally intuitive versus someone who's naturally observant? Absolutely. So this is the biggest difference in trait. And whenever you meet someone, this will be the one. I mean, I guess if they're super introvert or super extrovert, you'll be able to tell as well. But even introverts sometimes are good at being social because they've learned over the years. Well, also know? some introverts simply are social. They just can only take it for so long because they're internal. <sighs> okay, anyways, so. Intuitives and observants. Intuitives are people who think about the future and the past, and this is where their natural state of mind is. They think about ideas, they think about possibilities, they think about what could be. Observants, on the other hand, are practical, present people who are thinking about immediate matters, what their body needs, what their mind needs, what their family needs, that is what is most appealing to them. Yeah. And to intuitives, that can seem boring. And to observants, intuitives can seem fantastical. Hmm. But and maybe unrealistic. So tell me if this is a good example. So KK and I were on our way with the family to go boating on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And she's asking KK, my wife, she's asking questions like this, you know, you know, do you know the directions? Do we have the right address? Where are we going to park? Do you know who, like literally these questions. And I'm thinking, man, we're going to have so much fun. You know, are we going to use the tube? Are we like, my mind's like about the idea and who cares about these details? We'll figure them out as we go. So I have a note on that actually, that your perspective on that being open to ideas and wanting to go and do things, um, that is, and not focusing on present matters, uh -huh. that is actually a combination of your prospecting trait, which I'll discuss later, right. and your intuitive trait. Versus with KK, that is a mixture of her observant trait and her judging trait, okay. because that puts her in a role group in which they're more concerned about observant matters rather than just living in the state of living in that state of mind. Gotcha. So tell me, hmm, t let me give a different example. Okay. Mm -hmm. So one of our staff members, Jay, he's definitely on the judging side. I'm definitely on the prospecting side. Yeah. And a lot of times I come up with, you know, new ideas. Let's try this. Let's try that. And he can get frustrated because he's like, let's follow the plan. Now he realizes that new ideas is good. We should take advantage of opportunity. But I also realize that you need a plan because if you constantly change the plan, it frustrates the heck out of everyone. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that the difference between intuitive and observant, or is that the difference between prospecting and judging? That is the difference between prospecting and judging. Okay. So maybe okay. I should go in a little yeah, bit more on intuitive. what observance means. Yeah. So observants find satisfaction in the moment, living their lives, just simply being. That is where they find the greatest satisfaction. And now what that may be to them can differ depending on the type. While, whereas with intuitives, they get satisfaction off of thinking about the future or thinking about possibilities uh, and dreams. That is more appealing to them than their own present lives. Okay. And that is where they would rather be in their heads. So it's almost a time thing. You, could you say that observants are more present, intuitives are more in the future? Absolutely. And in the past. Their mind goes both ways, gotcha. So when I'm like thinking for a while, man, hmm, how that conversation went, hmm, was that good, was that bad? Is that an intuitive trait? Very much so. Like I'm wondering what they were thinking. I think I pretty much all intuitives do that to some extent, but observance, not as much. Are intuitives better at reading people's motives, you think, where observance are, they just, what you see is what you get kind of people? Yes, I totally agree. Intuitives definitely think about reading into people's motives now the actual skill that you have in reading people's mo motives depends on how actually skilled you are in that. But intuitives will definitely do that 
more often. Whether it's accurate or not, they right. lean that way. Like, what are they thinking? Or, or observance, like, well, this is what they said, so this is what it is. Does that make observance, and no offense to any observance out there, come across as dumb? You know what I mean? I like, I've heard people say intuitive. comments like, oh, well, you're just so simple-minded, as if they're dumb. But that's not an intelligence thing. Like, what do you think of that? That is just their brain's choice, really. If they were, in my head, I think people are somewhat born with certain non-negotiable personality traits. I think if they were born intuitive, that wouldn't change their intelligence. It's really, like I said again, it's a state of mind. They don't feel like they have to worry about that because that's not what's important. Like, what's, what's important the, is what they so actually did, what they actually said, yeah. what their obvious reactions actually were. Because if I'm being intuitive towards someone or about a situation, observant might say, well, but you don't really know. So why are you wasting time on that? Yeah. Just go with what they said. Like right. it, that makes sense. And, but then an, an intuitive might say, yeah, but can't you t see their motives? They weren't saying that sincerely. They were being sarcastic. Something else was really going on. How come you can't see that? Yeah. I would love to see an argument between observant and intuitive. Oh, oh wait, my wife and I argue sometimes. So never mind. we got that. <laughs> okay, cool. So we got the, we got extroverts versus introverts. Extroverts tend to operate based, or they get their energy from what's outside world with people, mm -hmm. introverts on the inside. And then we have observants and intuitives. Tell me if this is right, Adelie. The observants tend to operate in the present. What they see is, is you know, here, this is what it is. Whereas intuitives tend to go into the future and the past, and they tend to look into the motives behind things a little more. Right. Is that a good definition? Yeah. Okay, this is cool because I know some of this because you talk about it, but I'm learning as I go. Okay. Intuitives comprehend and observants just enjoy the moment. Hmm. Interesting. Do you think intuitives then have more problems with feeling discontent on the inside or being anxious or worried? Very, very much so. Because if I'm bo bothered by something, I find it difficult to sleep. Well, and my wife, if she's bothered by something, she just, KK, she just falls asleep like that, no problem. And it, it irritates the heck out of me. It's not a matter of anxiety i think all the types get anxiety but things intuitives will get more anxiety about things that have happened or their life or what's to come right. observants get anxiety about things happening right now gotcha okay so if like we run out of gas an observant's gonna be worried about that Correct. but the intuitive might not be because they're thinking about later on mm -hmm. okay cool okay so we got those two now there's two more sets for anyone listening or watching we're going through each of the four different comparisons so the next one don't remind me i'm gonna remember this is thinking versus feeling you know i remember the first time i was introduced to these personalities i thought thinking versus feeling would be the easiest one to identify but i don't know if that's true or not what do you think of that well first maybe you just explain what is the difference between the two are you asking which one is the easiest one to identify? No, no, no. I'm just saying, could you just define thinking versus feeling? So thinking versus feeling. Um, a lot of people think that this is, a lot of people read stereotypes into these where they're not there. Like they'll think feeling people are overly emotional all the time or thinking people are cold and callous and only care about the facts. But what thinking versus feeling actually is, because I promise you, everyone has both. It's about how do you make your decisions? Do you base your decisions off of logic or do you base it off of emotions most of the time? So are you that kind of person to go with your gut or are you the kind of person to go with what makes sense? Now, I, I wanna clear the air on something. Because I know there's a lot of people in this world who just assume if you make your decisions based on emotion, then you're just simply not as successful. You're simply not as smart. You're just almost, there's a, there's a sense of inferior because why wouldn't you use the facts and the logic? That's just a more intelligent, scientific person. What do you think of that stereotype? Because people do think this. Well, I think why people are kind of harping on each other, the other type, you know, thinking versus feeling is because they are not like thinkings are not going to like feelers because they think they are not making decisions wisely and feelers aren't going to like thinkers because they think they just don't care about people yeah. um so i think i mean both types have logic yeah. a thinker has no more logic than a feeler does 
That needs to be made clear. Really? Yes. It's simply the decisions. They might be just as logical, but the way they make decisions is based on a, a feeler, how I feel about it. Yes. How I sense things are versus just look at the facts. And let me make this clear. This is different from impulse. Someone can make a decision off of impulse and you could easily be a thinker or a feeler. Everyone makes decisions off of impulse. That's just called immaturity. That's simply human. But thinking versus feeling is more, they're both practical choices. For example, let's say you have a family and you're back in the cave times and a dinosaur is coming to eat your family. <laughs> I like where this is going. Really extreme example, but sure. I'm just using it, you know, so you get the gist. Mm -hmm. Um, so your family is in this cave and the dinosaur is coming yeah. and it's coming to eat your family. And there's this little hole right next to you where you can escape and save yourself. Would you go towards your family and try to get them all saved and even though you'll probably die with them? Or would you go in the hole knowing that they'll probably die anyways and the best thing you can do is save yourself? I would still try to bring them in. Right. Both choices are are good both are relevant one they s sincerely want to save their family and they're taking a risk the other one they know like that's not possible and this is the best choice is to well, save themselves right yeah. so that's an example of thinking versus feeling it's not based off of impulsivity that's separate it's based off of where you make your uh, decisions all right so thinking versus feeling thinkers tend to make their decisions based on logic Feelers tend to make their decisions based on how they feel, the emotion. This does not mean feelers are impulsive because both a thinker or a feeler could be impulsive. That's a maturity issue. And a feeler could be very logical. It's just more about how they make decisions. All right, now let's go to the fourth group, the last pair, and that is judging versus prospecting. I think this is the hardest one. First of all, the word judging you immediately has a negative connotation. Well, you're a judgmental person, but it doesn't mean that. And then prospecting, it, I don't know, it makes me think of like a prospector from the 1800s. Can you define these two personality traits? Uh, well, first, one point I want to make is since we, I do prefer like the 16 personalities perspective on personality psychology rather than plainly MBTI. Okay. A lot of people um, don't like this about 16P, even though I may think it makes sense. Um, so you know how earlier I mentioned 16P uses the big five traits uh, and associates them with the MBTI letters. Yeah. So for judging versus prospecting, 16P does agreeableness for this one. So basically um, friendliness, compassionateness versus criticalness and rationalism. Okay. But here's why this makes sense. Prospecting people are the friendly, compassionate on the big five skill. This means that they're open to opportunities. They're open to more people in their lives. They're open. They're just open, <laughs> um, except they're not as structured. Um, they tend to be not planners. They like to go on the whim, off a whim for certain things. They're comfortable in that space. And they can have trouble jumping making conclusions about things or making uh, set decisions about things. So in my opinion, I think that openness and compassionateness like goes in hand in hand because naturally a prospecting person is gonna be open to people in general and it does make them happier people. Like the studies show it. It does make them happier even if less accomplished in life. So I guess it depends which. What do you want? <laughs> There's pros and cons. Okay. So prospecting tend to be more open. You, you, they, you feel they tend to be more compassionate. They're more open to new ideas. If, you know, we're all working on something and someone says, guys, I got a better way for digging this hole. Let's try this. Oh, let's try that. Whereas the judging people might be like, hold on, this is our plan. Let's stick with it. Why are we trying something else? We don't know if that's going to work. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's talk about judging then. How, what about the judging people out there? So judging... Um, it's not judgmental, <laughs> right? That don't worry. It doesn't mean you're mean or anything, although there is truth behind it. So judging people tend to be set on their decisions. They tend to be very structured. Um, and here's the way their brain works. They 
look at things step by step. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Versus a prospecting people sees things in their head as little balloons, bubbles that they can grab down and reach. Like five balloons on the string. They're like, oh, let's choose this one. <laughs> and judging people see things very structured. Now, this can make them excellent planners and excellent at the keeping things in order. Um, but it can also close them off naturally to opportunities in their lives um, and even people in their life. They can kind of be closed off in some circumstances, um, even though that their structureness allows them to have a lot of... Predictability? Yeah, predictability, consistency, consistency yeah. and advancing in life because they think about it from a more realistic perspective. Okay. This has been really fascinating so far, Adelie, and thank you for sharing all this. So here's my next question. Practically, how can we use this information about personalities and understanding how humans operate in relationships? So for example, how do you know what personality type you mesh with the best? Is it the old, you know, wise saying a days, you know, uh, opposites attract, opposites are best? Does that stand true? Oh, yeah. Are there exceptions to this? Do you ever see people with two people with the exact, because I mean, think about it. We went through all these personality types. That means there are 16 different types of personalities based on all the ones we went through. Could, could someone be married to someone with the same personality? Absolutely. Oh boy, yeah. let's talk about this. Sure, okay. So I'm sure everyone's heard the term opposites attract. And there is truth behind this. Um, the reason is because naturally, if someone is behaving in a certain way, it's going to make the other person want to fill in the gaps, in a sense. Make them the supplant personality to your personality. Like supplanting. So can we use you and me as an example of this? <laughs> what happens when I take you to coffee? And just to be clear, Adelie's my daughter. What happens when I take you to coffee? and I'm really quiet because I'm more extroverted, you're more introverted. What happens? This ha literally happened the other day. Oh, uh, I come out of my shell and I start talking. But the weird thing is I enjoy it. Like, I feel like maybe <laughs> if you weren't an extrovert, I would grow up to be an extrovert myself. That like, who knows? So if someone's filling up the space, then naturally it's going to make the other person want to uh, recede a bit. That is why I think opposite personalities can go together really well is because they both feel like they can be themselves around each other because they already feel like they're the filling the space. Canceling the other person out all the time. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I think you and KK go well nicely, even though you both share that feeling trait. Right. Um, there's a lot of compatibility because of the differences. Yeah. But at the same time, this is going to cause a lot of conflict. Which being same, similar or different? Oh, both, but I'm gonna start with this one. The reason this can cause a lot of- Which one are you starting with? The opposite. The opposite, okay, got it. Um, the reason that this can cause a lot of conflict is because they will oppose each other. Two opposite personalities. This is a different wiring of the brain. The way your minds think, not even the decisions you come to or your background, that's irrelevant in this case, but literally the way that your mind is wired is opposite. So you're gonna really have trouble sometimes understanding the reasons that that person is the way they are. Yeah, or it's like it makes no sense. Yeah. Like we'll be, again, we'll be driving down the road, me and KK, my wife, and and you know, if I don't even know where we're going, I know where we're supposed to go, but I didn't think of putting in the maps. It drives her crazy. I'm like, it's not a big deal. Let's just put it in. We'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what about this? It's like, it's hard for me to understand and vice versa. Why aren't you thinking about these facts? So I totally see this. Yeah, yeah. but I love this though, because it means that whether it's a business partner or a sibling or a friend or a spouse, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. By understanding personalities, you can actually learn to appreciate their perspective and that they bring value to the table. Yes. And just because they're different doesn't mean they're inferior. And that's why I honestly, I think opposite personality types coming together to form a business partnership, a relationship, a friendship, anything. I think that is so powerful because if you can 
you know, have the patience and have the grit to go through that relationship together. Because no matter what, if you're spending a lot of time with a the person, there's going to be conflict, Absolutely. right? So I think if you can have that grit and determination to work together, the opportunity is huge because you're taking polar opposite perspectives and you're using the strengths in both of them to create something beyond comprehension. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's so, so cool. You know, I think one of the most um, powerful moments here at Just One Dime is when I've seen staff members say things like this. Hey, I recognize that the way you operate is you're a thinker and I'm a feeler. So please understand when I come to the table with my ideas, it's because I really want to make sure people are okay. You know, you're a strong feeler. You've even brought this to me multiple times. Like, hey, I want to make sure these people are okay. And then, but then for the other person to say, hey, I appreciate you're a feeler. And when I bring this to the table, I just want to make sure it makes sense. Like when people can recognize both sides, that is so powerful. And it, it requires maturity. It requires self-reflection and self-awareness and awareness of them as well because yeah. sometimes you can actually be very genuinely confused as to why that person said what they said or did what they did like it literally don't comprehend in your brain but it makes sense to them and if you can understand the solid reasons why that may be then you can at least show empathy and be able to work on a compromise so how does understanding your personality help to ignite personal development? Like what are some ways that can help? Whew. Well, that is one of the biggest things, I think, because a lot of people have misconceptions about themselves. Like, for example, when I was little, I thought I was an extrovert. And then I thought it was an ambivert, I'm sure. A lot of people have heard that term before, like a mix of an extrovert and an introvert, but I actually think those are more rare um, because as we mentioned before, it's about where you get your energy, not how social you are. Um, but I think if you can understand the way that you think in the same way that you can understand the way someone else thinks, you can have better empathy for yourself in a sense of completion. Like a sense of, ah, I know, I, I, I get it now. You know, I'm not alone and this makes sense. And now you know what, to, what you need to do to work on your weaknesses because you understand what problems or struggles or um, clashes in your life are and where they're coming from. And we spend less time judging ourselves. Like, why do I always get anxious about this? Or why do I always, people always call me cold and heartless in this. All of a sudden we're like, wait a minute, no. I actually understand myself so I can show grace to myself and not judge myself and see this as a bad thing, but see it as an opportunity yeah. to grow. What's your favorite personality type? Uh, I like all the personality types, honestly. Um, Do you like ENFPs? Are they pretty cool? ENFP? Oh, you? You? <laughs> <laughs> These Kim Painter. When you say Kim Painters are the craziest people in the world, think about Caleb, Marcy, Seth. I'm trying to think of... Um, uh, Robin Williams, who else is a campaigner? Hey, that, let's do that for a minute. Let's go through who are campaigners, that, like well-known campaigners in this world. ENFPs for those of you listening. Yeah, yeah. ENFPs. Yeah, yeah. 16 titles. Extroverted, intuitive, feeling, prospecting. You see how I had to go like this to make sure I hit, hit them all? For those of you have, who have seen Gilmore Girls, Lorelai Gilmore, the mom, she's an ENFP. That's just one at the top of my head. Um, back back to what you were asking, mm -hmm. I think I have my answer. Okay, what's your answer? All diplomats. Really? And, and could you, just to be clear for everyone, can you explain what you mean by diplomats? Okay. The personalities, both on MBTI and 16P's perspective, are categorized by groups, role groups. Uh, basically, what these role groups are is they categorize you based on what your goal is in life. So we have all those who share the intuitive trait and the thinking trait are analysts. Okay. They focus on ideas, theories. Was Steve Jobs? An analyst? Yeah. yeah, okay, that makes sense. I literally didn't know that, but I was like, that's who he was, intuitive right. and thinking for sure. They think a lot about possibilities for technology or advancement. And then we have all those who share the intuitive 
and feeling trait are the diplomats. Those are my favorite personality types. I, I love all of them, but I would have to say I really appreciate those because they make their decisions based off of their morals, what they personally believe in. Yeah, so strong convictions. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean they're more moral people. They're just driven by that. They're yes. very strong convictions. Yes, yeah, so like at the end of the day, if you are in a situation where you have to make a last minute decision, that decision is going to come from what they personally believe in their heart. Whereas for analysts, it's going to be what actually, I, I don't even know for analysts because I feel like that would never happen to them. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You know, when I do cheers with KK, usually it's like this because she is in, let me, let me figure it through. It's, she's an I S F J ISFJ a defender, which Alan Yurazar, if you watch this, Alan, you're a defender, brother. <laughs> uh, Madison, she's a defender. When we do cheers, I'm always like, cheers to changing the world. Let's reach a billion people. Let's help people. Let's build a huge real estate business. And she's like, cheers to this moment. Cheers to hanging out with you. And it always makes me laugh. She's like, why do you always have to have these super dramatic motivations for your cheers? Yeah. That's so interesting. All right. Well, any last words of wisdom or tips or anything you would like to share with people listening, you know, so they can take this information and apply it to their life? Anything at all that you wanted to share? before we close this up? Well, I would say, first of all, go and do the research on personalities yourself. Like there are lots of resources out there and I'm sure for most people, it's very fascinating and you will learn a lot. Um, I personally recommend 16P. There is a lot of kind of controversy about that versus MBTI um, because of the differences in the big five and what I explained earlier. But I would recommend looking into some kind of personality test and taking it for yourself and just spending time reading that and seeing if it applies to you. And just be thinking consciously throughout your day um, how your little decisions, where they're coming from, why are you actually making the decisions you're making, and same for others. Why are they? What personality could they be? This will help you empathize with people a lot more and just understand human interaction in general. Um, it has helped me and it's very entertaining as well. It's fascinating. Like if you think about it, Adelie, you are studying the most amazing thing on planet earth and that is people. Yeah. You know, as much as I love my dog, he is not as interesting as a human. Yeah. He, people are amazing. They can break your heart. They can make your day. Yeah. Um, People are just incredible. The world wouldn't be where it is today, all the good and all the bad, were it not for people. Like, it's just, I, I, I go back to what C.S. Lewis said, if you could see a person and all their potential, you'd probably fall down and worship them as an angel. I believe that. Yeah. Our potential is so strong. And our capability, we have capability for as much evil as we do good. Yes. We're good. just yes. massive, impactful vessels more than we could possibly more, more than I know, more than you know. Totally. And for anyone out there listening right now who may be depressed, sad, discouraged, feeling low, feeling like you're not worth it, feeling like you don't have what it takes, I just want to take a minute to remind you, you have infinite worth. You are capable of so much more than you even know. You do. And I've gone through moments in my life where I felt like complete crap. I know you have, but you know what's neat? Sometimes you have to go through those low moments in order to realize, hey, I can change, I can grow, I can learn from this. You won't appreciate the good if you don't have the bad, and that brings balance. So know this, that you are loved, you were created for a reason, and I hope this gives you a ton of motivation and help if you're listening right now. Thank you so much, Adelie, for being on the Jodcast. This has been really cool. Um, I'm going to tell everyone where they can find you, but before I do that, if you are looking for a team to build you an Amazon business and you want us to use our combined 50 plus years of combined experience to do that, we can do that for you. But you have to apply. You go through an interview process to make sure you're the right kind of business partner. Here's what you do. You go to jod.com slash DFY. So JOD stands for just one dime. And then DFY stands for done for you. And you apply. And if you're approved, our team will work 
to build you and Amazon business. You own it. We receive part of that revenue share on a sliding scale so that you always make as much or more than we make. And the goal is to take advantage of the fastest growing market sector right now, jod.com slash DFY. Okay, before we go, Adelie, where can people find you if they want to get a little more of this information or tips or ideas? I'd say my best content is going to be on my TikTok, okay. um, Adelie the Mediator. Adelie spelled like Natalie without the first letter. Nice. A T A L I E the mediator now you know what personality she is so if you want to learn more and isn't it true that infps are fascinated with personalities more so um, or is that not true no that makes sense they get obsessed about all sorts of things so i guess it's just matter what comes to them <laughs> what they're interested in okay cool all right thanks so much adelie you guys have an awesome rest of your day <laughs>